Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, ALSD, for having me here this afternoon. Of course, welcome again to all of you here to Atlanta. Before I get started, uh, there's a little bit of a running joke, apparently, at the Hawks offices. See, everyone thinks that I have a tendency to be a bit long-winded when I speak. <laughs> they think that I've never met a camera, a microphone, or a stage that I don't love. So Stacy Belding with, uh, with the Hawks, as we were sitting there, uh, Stacy's a manager of owner and premium membership services, long title. Uh, but she knows me well, and I interact with Stacy quite often. And she told me, she said, look, Grant, remember when you're up there on stage, remember the five Bs. She said, be brief, brother, be brief. <laughs> so, Stacy, I will try. Um, yes, it's very exciting to be here. And, you know, on the way over here, I was thinking, you know, I do have a really sort of unique perspective about professional sports because I've been in professional sports in some capacity, some relationship to it, really my entire life. My dad uh, played professional football in the NFL, played for the Dallas Cowboys. Any Cowboy fans? Okay. Um, all right, there you go, one clap. Um, played for the Cowboys in the 70s. I was born in Dallas while he was playing. And uh, well, uh, my, my father who uh, can't make any major decision in life without months of thought and contemplation, uh, was convinced that I would be a girl. And uh, so he had a number of girl names to choose from once I was born. Well, needless to say, when I was born, I was not a girl. And, uh, and so for three days, I was baby boy Hill in the hospital. So not until Roger Staubach, the great quarterback, uh, and leader of the Dallas Cowboys. He came to the hospital, and he was very close with my dad and my mom. He was in, our, he was in their wedding. He took control of the visitor's office, the visitor's room, much like he took the control of the huddle. And he said, we have to give this child a name. So uh, I'm named after my paternal grandmother. And uh, as someone who eventually grew up in, um, in the Washington, D.C. area as a Cowboy fan, it gave me great pleasure to say that I was named by the great Roger Staubach. <laughs> but nevertheless, as I got older, uh, I was around sports. I was on the sidelines, in locker rooms, uh, at training camp. So I had a really unique perspective about professional sports at a very young age. I uh, started to grow and became very tall and wasn't really that good at football and played a lot of basketball and started to excel in high school. Got uh, an opportunity to go play basketball at Duke University. Uh, that's right, go Duke. Uh, and then eventually was drafted in 1994 with the Detroit Pistons and had uh, some great years in Detroit, just some magical years very early. Transitioned to Orlando where I really struggled because I had injuries and I was hurt more than I was healthy. Uh, but then eventually closed up the last six years of my career in Phoenix uh, where I was more of a role player. Um, but still had a lot of fun and fulfillment during those experiences. So when I retired, I was 40 years old. And, um, you know, I jumped into television. So now I had an interesting uh, perspective, if you will, when it came to, uh, to, to professional basketball. But not until three years ago when we uh, purchased the Atlanta Hawks, our managing partner, Tony Ressler, a part of our ownership group, that I really get to appreciate sort of all the hard work that you guys do and how important and valuable you are to an organization. You see, I thought it was just hard work to go to practice, practice hard for two hours for the whole day and then be home by noon and have the rest of the day to recover. Uh, but the work that you guys put in is so vitally important. And what I realized these last three years, there's a lot of similarities to what you do and what you do in the basketball court or on the football field. It's really about teams, about working together. And well, before I finish, I, I need a show of hands. Are, are there any basketball fans here? You don't have to work in basketball, you're just a basketball fan, okay. Now I know this is professional sports uh, conference, if you will, but are there any college basketball fans here in the building? Okay, all right, that's good, good number. Now this is where it could get a little tricky. Are, are there any Duke college basketball fans. 
All right, that's what I figured, yes. I have to be careful when I ask that question depending upon where I am in the country. But uh, whether you like Duke or you hate Duke, I think you certainly uh, have to acknowledge the success of the program over the last 35 years. And that's in large part because of a Coach K, Mike Krzyzewski. And his success, his ability as a, as a, as a coach, as a teacher, uh, as a leader of young men, uh, is just off the charts. And his ability to do it over many multiple generations is, uh, is quite, quite uh, amazing in its own right. Uh, but I learned about team uh, from, from him. And I learned from one of the best. And there's three things as I was driving over here that I was trying to think of. And Stacy kept texting me and was bugging me while I was in deep thought, uh, making sure I arrived. Uh, but the three things that really stick out when I think of my time at Duke and I think these values uh, are, are something that apply in all aspects of life and certainly transfer to what you guys do. So I wanted to share those things. So the first thing that sticks out, and thing, one of the things that Coach K talked about uh, almost on a daily basis, and it's love. It's having love for what you do, having passion for what you do. You know, uh, when you have that love for what you're gonna do and, and your work, uh, and being on the court, uh, then you're gonna be there on time. You're gonna respect your teammates. You're gonna respect your craft. You're gonna respect yourself, take care of yourself. You're gonna endure some of the difficult challenges that we all are faced with. But if you have that, that passion, or you can create that passion individually but collectively, then you have something special. So that was one thing. Another thing I thought about, communication which is the obvious. What relationship doesn't work unless you communicate? But in basketball, it was interesting. When I arrived at Duke, I was very shy, I was very quiet, I was a cerebral player, I didn't necessarily do a lot of talking on the court, but that changed quickly. Coach K demanded that you talk when you play. And you went to a Duke practice and it almost sounded like they're over-talking. They're you know, talking too much. But when you're playing defense, you're talking to whoever's guarding the basketball. And he felt, first of all, what talking does is it empowers your teammates. It lets them know, you know what, I got your back. I'm there for you. I'm there to be helpful in case something goes wrong. So that's important. It also keeps everybody connected. When you're in a game, when you're in the heat of the battle, the heat of the moment, and things are going crazy and the crowd's loud and you're on the road, talking on defense, on offense, in huddles, it keeps you connected throughout the game. And then, in addition to that, in talking and communicating, you know, one of the things we're all human, and even athletes are, uh, but you start thinking about what happened in the past, or you can start thinking about what might happen in the future. Man, coach just yelled at me in that last huddle. Or so-and-so looked me off, I was wide open. Or man, that guy just embarrassed me and, and dumped on me in a game. You know, these are thoughts that can come through, or I hope I hit my next shot. But what talking does is it forces you to stay in the moment. It forces you to stay uh, alert to what's happening right now. And lastly, talking, and Coach K stressed this, it's a selfless act. You're giving to the group. It's a selfish act to not speak. So communication, I believe, yes, in a huddle, in a court, on a basketball, but also in your offices, when you're, if you can communicate with one another, you can be great at what you do, but if you don't work well with the group, then the group ultimately suffers. So, number two was communication, and then the last thing, and it's obvious, but, but hard work. And you don't get anywhere, you don't have success in life without working hard. And, and, and one thing that, that coach, that I learned from coach was not about working you know, having three and four or five hour practices, we were very efficient with our work. We might have a practice for 35 minutes, maybe an hour, but never longer than an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes. But we worked extremely hard during that time. But he felt if you work hard, then you have time to recover, you have time to study, you have time to have a social life, you have time to have balance. And so sometimes we get so driven with our goals and, and, and certainly accomplishing those goals, and those are very important, particularly with the Hawks. Um, but it's important to have balance in your life, and it's important to be in a situation where you can get away from it. So when you come back, you're recharged, you're re-energized, 
and you're ready to give your best. So th those were, were, were three things that at least that came to my mind. I would have thought of more, but, but like I said, Stacy kept texting me uh, on the way over here. Um, but no, I, 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 I am very excited to be a part of this conference. I look forward to uh, uh, answering some questions and getting a little bit more into the details of what we are doing with the Atlanta Hawks and why we are so excited uh, with our new arena and how innovative we've tried to be. Uh, but I want to encourage you guys uh, while you're here for this conference uh, to enjoy yourself, to, to exchange and share ideas, and, and really take the opportunity to learn from one another. Uh, I think that's, that's so important to everyone's growth. Uh, and, and just if you can do that, you can all be successful. And with that said, as Jeff's coming up, Stacy, I think I was brief enough. Uh, and now I'll transition to the Q&A section. Thank you.